you know, we, we try to do what, what, I, what I would call an integrated life. We, we do not separate the, the church life from our work life. So we, you would, you, you'll find us pray for customers. You'll find us uh, helping people. I'm an architect, but I'm also a pastor at work. Also, es ist nicht, dass man es nur in der Familie oder in der Kirche lebt, sondern er lebt wirklich im Geschäft, er betet für seine Kunden. We've seen so many people that were so thankful just for us to share the gospel, just for, for us to be there, to listen to them. We, we've seen so many people who were kind of waiting. Wir wollen ähm, die gute Botschaft we have this deep conviction that God really loves the world. He really does. He loves people. That's our burning heart. Jesus came to, to, um, to spread fire. And it was his desire that the fire would spread into the furthest uh, corners of the earth. The gospel is like medicine. It doesn't work before you take it. It's the answer for for, for everything, for problems, for loneliness, for, um, for self-centeredness and all of that. You can get a new start. All the bad things you did can be forgiven. You can even bury it and continually get new start from God. Everywhere you are is an opportunity to share the gospel. It's not about me. That becomes more clear. So. A few months ago I started another construction. And I had uh, some Portuguese guys and they already from the beginning told me, Alex, why are you so different? What's going on with you? Your culture is different. You're serving us. You're not just demanding us. You're here for us. You're listening to us. And I kept smiling and thanking them for the comment. And I could have said, I'm a funny Italian. I decided to not do so. And I said simply, Jesus lives in me. They said, you're going to tell me more about him. I said, sure, I'm here with you. Vor vier Jahren habe ich Katharina kennengelernt und das war einfach so eine Freude, als sie in den Laden kam, wo ich gearbeitet habe und gefragt hat, ob ich mehr wissen würde über die Bibel, ob ich die Bibel kenne. Und ich dachte, wow, so cool, das ist eigentlich das, was ich schon lange mal will. Das war für mich so ein Buch mit, mit sieben Siegeln. Wo die Eva zu uns ins Haus kam und ich dann gesagt, hey Eva, willst du etwas mehr wissen über Jesus? Kennst du uns? Und sie, ja natürlich, die Eva ist von Polen. Ich darf es jetzt ihre weitergeben. Und sie hat mir eigentlich gesagt, Amanda, das ist das, was ich mir das Leben lang gewünscht habe. Eine so eine Familie. Und natürlich hat sie auch Familie gehabt, eben die geistliche Familie. Das ist doch das, was wir im heutigen Leben brauchen. This is the, the true essence of the church, is being family. The church in its nature brings heaven here and bring change to the society. The first Christians, they didn't go to church. They were the church. And we need to rediscover that. We need to see that church is family. This whole thing with, with our house church is, is not about I have to go to church or I have to do some something or have to do all the right things but it's really about family it's about trusting each other i made many mistakes with my children you know it's not a perfect father but i tried to be honest about my own failures you know, so that they would know i'm not on the pedestal es schaut so sehr erstaunlich wie sie den weg leben mit gott ähm ich kann jetzt eigentlich so an sich so Nicht sehr viel, also sehr, sehr wenig eigentlich äh, Eltern, besonders in meinem Umkreis, wo so leben wie meine Eltern, also eigentlich gar keine. Aber für das bin ich sehr dankbar. Was auch lässig ist, zu sehen, ist, dass auch gerade ich und meine Brüder auch wirklich einen Einfluss haben auf die Leute. Und das haben wir auch einmal gemerkt, wo die bei uns waren und wir einfach können von uns erzählen können. Weil sehr viele Jugendliche halt auch den Glauben nicht offen leben oder nicht so gerne darüber reden. Aber Gerade durch das, dass auch wir eine Geschichte erlebt haben, dass wir können erzählen können, wie es bei uns ist, haben wir halt wirklich auch einen grossen Einfluss auf das, was, was andere erleben. Ich glaube, es braucht in der Zeit, in der wir drin sind, es braucht die Sicherheit der geistlichen Familie. Weil es sind so viele Turbulenzen herum, es sind so viele Verunsicherungen. 
Und ich glaube, jeder sehnt sich dann noch einen, einen Ort zu haben, wo man daheim ist, wo man angenommen ist, wo man angenommen ist, wie man ist. Und wo ein sicherer Hafen ist. Und ich glaube, wir Schweizer brauchen das dringend, dringender denn je. Heaven on Earth only happens in real relationship, because the Father, the Son and the Spirit, they have amazing relationships. So we need to learn how to trust again. We need to, we need to have real relationships, not Sunday-based, performance-based relationships. That's, that's nonsense. I mean, we did pioneering in how to be church since we are married. We had so many people sitting around our table. And we were teaching, we were talking about the same things. But you realize, after all these years, we realized that we didn't see that much fruit from the meeting-based teachings. But when you go into a personal relationship, you can say totally different things. You can go into greater depth. We're still in the learning process, of course, but uh, we see amazing fruit, yeah. Through some connections, we came in contact with Knut and Elizabeth and their network. And we tried to find out what are the principles that are working everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's in India or if it's in Switzerland or if it's in the Ukraine. There are principles that work here and that work everywhere. This is what we really learned from Knut was to, to learn what it means to multiply and how to make disciples uh, and how to train them well. Knut is a formidable, he's an excellent trainer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's what really what we've learned and what we owe him so much for. That uh, in his words, it would be that we gained focus. I'm not here to start a Norwegian church or any other kind of, uh, of church. I am an investor, so on my business card. That's what it says, Knut Ausland, investor. I invest in the only eternal thing on this planet, human beings. I identify some of those people who already have a fire. They already have a vision, God-given vision. And it's my task to help them, to, uh, to maybe equip them and to release them into their calling. You know that the whole theme of discipleship has really, in the last two years, I would say, has really become, has taken on a new dimension, a new focus, and a new understanding of what really Jesus meant. You know, when he said, go, go out, our, our first call is really to go out and make disciples of all nations. Teach them everything I taught you. When you look in the gospel, when Jesus calls his 12, disciples uh, first thing is he asks Peter you know or he tells Peter Peter I want I'll, I'll make you a fisher of men der glaube oder jesus hat mich nicht interessiert es ist geschichte wo ich sagen hey lüt mi zieh damit und ich habe den martin kennengelernt faszinierend mir ist es nicht gut gegangen er lüte genau zu seinem zeitpunkt an und Sag, darf ich für dich beten? Ja, tu du. Es ist mir besser gegangen. Und kurz darüber haben wir auch beschlossen, dass wir uns taufen lassen. Ich bin ruhiger geworden. Ich habe nicht mehr so Stress in mir. Ich habe mit meiner Schwester dürfen Frieden schliessen, wo ich acht Jahre mit ihr keinen Kontakt mehr hatte. Das ist für mich ganz viel wert. And this is what makes our lives worth living. What else can it be then if you see people just grow and be healthy and be happy and be stable, even in times when it's stormy and when it's, uh, things get hard? This is really the heart of the gospel. The heart of the kingdom is to make disciples, to make sons and daughters of the kingdom. I got inspired from, of course, Jesus but also the Apostle Paul. So in Acts 20, in his farewell speech to the elders, the leaders from, from the church, he sums up his ministry. And he says that uh, he, he shared the gospel in public and he was uh, teaching people in the homes and he emphasized most on warning and teaching everyone 
one to one, day and night, even with tears. And that's the the, the one to one thing that we we uh, we have uh, shifted our focus on. Discipleship is something that happens in relationships. Wir haben gesehen, dass es funktioniert. Es war gut, es funktioniert und die Jüngerschaft funktioniert. Und wir wollen das gesehen in der Schweiz und in ganz Europa, dass Menschen Jünger machen und die Jünger wieder Jünger machen und die wieder Jünger machen. Und so breitet sich Gottes Reich auf eine ganz andere Art und Weise aus. Und dann ist es so, wie, wie es in der Bibel steht, dass ein bisschen Sauerteig den ganzen Teig versaut, dass auf einmal du in deinem Umfeld in jedem Bereich einen Unterschied machst und ähm, den ganzen Teig sauer machst im Endeffekt. This is something that has, has the power to bring real change to uh, an environment and to a neighborhood, to a village, a city, a nation and a continent. Ich habe so einen Hunger gehabt und ich habe sich leben und erleben und sehen, ganz konkret in meinem Leben. Und ich habe angefangen, dafür zu beten, dass ich geistlich älter bekomme, obwohl ich gar nicht wirklich gewusst habe, was es bedeutet oder wie das ganz konkret aussieht. Und Gott hat mir eine geistliche Familie geschenkt, wo man einander unterstützt, einander hilft und einander pusht, wo man füreinander da ist. Das ist genau das, was ich möchte weitergeben möchte. Paul said, Uh, you got many teachers, in, but you have few fathers, and uh, that's what we we've we've come across many many times. And I think it's it's uh, it's one of the deepest realizations that that uh, and so needed in our time. Spiritual parents, oh. <laughs> you know, I, I see so many people who said yes to Jesus, but then they are here and there, trying to do their best, but they are not able to grow. Because we need parents, this is normal, that children need, need parents. And I see this so much now, more and more, uh, how many people with potential, with calling, are walking around somewhere and just trying to survive. And you know, if we, just, if we can see these spiritual parents in Europe, in Poland, in different countries, and then we see that people can be connected to them. <laughs> I believe we will see huge change because you know this is this is normal thing. This is biblical thing. Parents and also apostles, prophets, evangelists who are gifts for a church. So I, I'm so thankful that I have my spiritual parents, and they are really investing in me. They love me. Uh, they show me things, they correct me if it's needed, but every time they are doing this because they love me. It's my great prayer for spiritual parents in Europe, uh, that we will see more of them. And I want to grow uh, because I want to have these many spiritual children. Because I believe that this is what I can invest here. I can invest in, in Europe. You know, Jesus said, when the storm hits, it's going to be revealed on what people's lives have been built on. So, you know, it's really good to be there when the storm hits with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the moment where you can really drop the seed, where you really can show, demonstrate the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Spirit. And you can really release God into the circumstance. But if, you, if you're too far away from people, you will not be able to do that. And I think that's what Knut, of course, also has helped us a lot. What, what this really means and, and how we lay foundations in people's lives, how we, what's, it, what's, what's first. You know, it, I think we need to have a bit of a strategy. When, when etwas Neues dazu kommt, um, we, we have wissen, wie die Schritt, wo, wo wir mal anfangen. Was sind die ersten Steps? Wir, wir wissen ein bisschen, was, was, was brauchen sie am Anfang, dass sie auch wirklich wachsen können. Ja, ich denke, seit Knut und Elisabeth hier sind, haben wir wirklich really erlebt, dass das uh, Wort so wichtig ist. Und uh, so much more wichtiger, als wir vorher gedacht haben. Wenn wir started off, we mostly thought people would be interested in what we think or our experience. And we've, we've changed so much to just know the word of God and just bring people the word. We are not so important, but 
if we know the word really well, we can come up with the word and the word works in them. And that's, that's amazing. We don't need to be a master to and have so much knowledge to be able to, to start sharing. So, so you, you can have one thing, you've learned one thing and you can start sharing. Da braucht es nicht im wahrsten Sinne des Wortes, wie es alle kennen, der Kirche, wo man mit ihnen gehen und und beten und einen Priester zulassen. Wir können das alle auch. Und das ist am besten, wenn wir es weitergehen. It's very easy to think this is more difficult in my country to make disciples. So it was also my story because when I heard those stories from India, from Norway, I thought, oh, this is easier in Norway. This is easier in India. But later I saw in the Bible that's, that's a lie because uh, harvest is ready and just workers are needed. I need to change to see the harvest. I see that Europe will again be transformed by the power of the gospel. When church members become disciples, because church members don't change society, disciples do. Disciples, they have in themselves the power, the, the love, the values that can transform a society from down and up. And I believe that when we get back to our roots and um, come into a close relationship with God and let Him lead us and guide us, and uh, we get the fire of the Holy Spirit, we will share the gospel, we will spread this, and we will see churches multiplied here, and we will see all of Europe impacted with heavenly values.